So a short while ago, a quote by Obama started circulating on Twitter where he claimed the following. Looking back, it's embarrassing to recognize the degree to which my intellectual curiosity, those first two years of college, parallel the interests of various women I was attempting to get to know. Marx and Marcuse, so I had something to say to the long-legged socialist who lived in my door. Fennon and Gwendolyn Brooks, for the smooth-skinned sociology major who never gave me a second look. Foucault and Wolf, for the ethereal bisexual who wore mostly black. As a strategy for picking up girls, my pseudo-intellectualism proved mostly worthless. I found myself in a series of affectionate but chaste friendships. I hopefully don't need to explain why this behaviour is incredibly manipulative and predatory. It certainly was obvious to the entirety of left Twitter, who wasted no time in memeing about it. And this idea really caught me. It's related to something I've been wanting to talk about for quite a long time. Because the patterns of ex-incel behaviour are ones I've noticed many times over, both in public figures and in my personal life. What is an incel? In case anyone isn't familiar with the word incel, it originated as a term used by some men to identify themselves on the basis that they want to get laid but can't. The identity hinges on the idea that sex is some kind of right or need that society takes from these men, therefore making them involuntarily celibate, rather than seeing sex as an activity which people volunteer to do. This ideology is often accompanied by a great deal of resentment towards the social ex- <coughs> This ideology is often accompanied by a great deal of resentment towards the social expectations that society places on men. And in this regard, there's nothing separating an incel from a feminist. The difference is that although incels recognise many real issues posed to men by patriarchy, they then go on to blame even more marginalised people such as women and the Jews. The basic premise of entitlement is one that could only occur from a position of structural power meaning that the ideology is relatively exclusive to men. In other words, incels resent the effects of patriarchy upon themselves personally, while accepting its core values and ideology as absolute truth. Other men are the winners, they are the losers, and they know it. So what happens when an incel starts winning? It's time to tell you the story of Ralph. So in primary school, there was this one kid who was very nerdy and got bullied a lot, was conventionally unattractive, you know, just your standard kind of, like, kid who gets bullied um, archetype. Um, and that was kind of it throughout primary school. But in secondary school, he was one of the first kids to develop, like, physically. Um, so he suddenly had, like, abs and stuff. That by itself didn't change anything, at least not at first. He was still equally awkward, just a bigger amount of awkward. However, we used to go to this weird little nightclub, which was specifically for underage people, where they pretty much exclusively played heavy metal and the Pokemon theme song. We'd go there and drink Red Bull and headbang in a circle. One time, like, for a laugh, this this kid, this boy, um, you know, unlikable, unpopular Ralph, we'll call him Ralph, came with us. Now in this club there was this uh, weird practice where most of the time uh, different groups who were there would just keep to themselves, they wouldn't really socialise. However, if you saw someone who you didn't know, uh, who you liked the look of, you could send someone over. So what would happen is you'd just be doing your own thing in the group and then suddenly like some person would come up and they'd be like, ah, oh, X wants to pull you. And then you'd kind of squint into the darkness and like look for the person who, who this re request had come from and you'd finally spot them and they'd be there sort of like, and if you liked what you saw or the little that you could see, then you'd accept the request, go off into one of the dark corners of the club and kiss or grope or whatever the corners would allow. I don't know, I never asked anyone, I never got asked. We go in as normal and Ralph waddles in with us like he's still struggling to get used to his new muscle mass. Halfway through the night, he gets hit with a pull request from a hot girl. And this was very shocking, but in retrospect, of course he did. Like, this was a complete stranger. She didn't know that he was grotty, snotty, nerdy, spotty Ralph. She just saw a sort of tall rectangle shape and like a strong jawline and thought, yeah. So obviously it was hilarious and uh, everyone did that thing of like slagging him off, but also egging him on and he went for it, obviously. And the next day he was a changed man. 
but not for the better. What Ralph suddenly realised was that he had at least some conventionally attractive qualities which he could use to get laid or whatever the equivalent was that kids were doing at the time. Again, I wouldn't know. So don't worry, Mum. This affected his social standing, which affected his confidence, which affected his social standing, and blah blah blah, you get the picture. Quickly, he went from being a bullied, unpopular kid to being someone who I wouldn't quite go so far as to say popular, but certainly got dates and nobody outright bullied anymore. Like, he was afforded this kind of grudging respect. But he hadn't magically become a nice person. His values, at least the ones he seemed to actively prioritise, remained incredibly toxic. Objectifying females, trying to outman the other males, using the number of people he'd got with as a measure of something, really going for this kind of embarrassing edgelord persona. The incel values didn't just disappear because he got laid. All that changed was his role within the incel verse. Sudden awareness of how to change the role that you play within a toxic worldview doesn't in itself alter that worldview. Our society conditions us to internalise and accept the values of toxic masculinity. Incels are just an extreme example of what those of us who can't live up to those values but still feel like we should benefit from them turn into. Being suddenly able to do so doesn't make those values any less toxic. And Obama is the perfect demonstration of this. Hidden cells and incel core. Now none of this is to say once an incel always an incel or anything like that. Some people do genuinely grow out of it and become better people. Think of it like Pokemon. If you start with an incel, you have a couple of evolutionary options. One is to just stay an incel. Another is to genuinely reform, reject toxic masculinity, and shed the incel identity altogether. And the third is to get the sex, making you technically no longer an incel, but the core ideology is still there. It's just hidden. What should we call this? A hidden cell? Incel core? I don't know, give me your own suggestions in the comments. Now, hidden cells are very difficult to spot because they look like reformed incels or even people who were never incels to begin with. Nobody would look at Obama and assume that he was someone who ever had trouble getting laid. I found the quote surprising even though I'm fully aware of the atrocities he's committed. But really, this war criminal used to fake his politics to pick up women? That can't be right. He let a child pat him on the head once. He's so intelligent, he's so articulate, look at him go, he can sing, he can dance, what a guy. The hidden cell can operate in plain sight in part due to conventional likeable traits, including conventional attractiveness, elegance, intelligence, creative talent and a sense of humour. In fact, if you distilled most people's notion of what the ideal man is, it's probably something roughly like Obama. But another very important factor to consider is just that society's standards for goodness are really so low. Men, in particular, don't have to do very much to be seen as virtuous. The bar for effort is so low that merely stating support for a cause is seen as a big deal. So if someone claims to be progressive, most people will take that at face value. Including me. Over time, I have several times over dated people claiming to be feminists who have turned out to be abusers. Unsubstantiated progressive claims help to shield individuals from most scrutiny and criticism from most people. But on top of that, it also helps them to believe in their own goodness. Consider, for example, the fact that the incel worldview is centred around objectifying and dehumanising women. If that's your starting point, then it's not a stretch to think that not actively hating women or calling them slurs makes you a feminist. A lot of hidden cells might be sincere. Several of the ones that I've met do seem to genuinely believe that they're good people, or at least that they're doing their best. As I said, society's standards are so low that most people just kind of suck. Of course, this doesn't change the negative impact of their actions. However, another thing to consider is that willful ignorance does require willpower. And the more challenges to your worldview you encounter, the more willpower is required to maintain that ignorance. Some people, Obama included, are clearly informed and capable enough to do better. Politics is pickup artistry. You might have come across the argument that Obama did the best that he could 
under the circumstances, like the most that his position would allow. Like, you know, it, it's not his fault, the bad things he did. He, he had to kill children. He's president of the United States. It's fair to say that you do have to play the system to a degree if you are one of the people attempting to change it from the inside, but going into it with genuine ethical values creates someone like Bernie Sanders, Jeremy Corbyn, or AOC, not this snake. Reminder, Obama has read Marx. He knows there are better ways of doing things. He knows how bad the things he's doing are. And honestly, I think this makes him even more dangerous than many other politicians who seem to not know any better, because at least with them, you know what you're dealing with. Whereas this guy, might fund your education, or he might drop a bomb on your head, whichever best serves his career. Obama may no longer be a university incel trying to pick up women, but his basic approach hasn't changed. His priority is not to do the right thing, but what will get him the most respect, recognition, attention, fame, and ultimately, power. As a wannabe pickup artist, Obama merely had to learn the politics and then regurgitate the correct one in front of the right person. It wasn't necessary that he personally believed any of it. By the time he'd actually become a politician, he'd refined the technique enough to become president of the United States. Obama never stopped being a pickup artist. He just moved on from targeting individuals to the entire world. You hear some people making the argument that it is sometimes necessary to support these people as the lesser evil, even if they are evil. And uh, well, I don't necessarily dispute that, um, but I do think it's important to remember that and treat those people with a kind of wariness. Because Obama types can never be trusted. They can't be trusted even if they do some good things. If someone holds a progressive view because doing so benefits their career rather than because they're genuinely committed to it, then they can't be trusted to actually fight for it to speak truth to power or to say the unpopular things that are necessary for social progress, because doing so might harm their ratings. They may U-turn on their views entirely the second it becomes convenient to do so. Although practitioners of incel core have escaped the bottom of the pile, they still judge themselves and everyone else according to the standards that put them there, which can never be healthy for them or for anyone else. In endlessly striving to be bigger and better, a hidden cell can never truly accept themselves for what they are and be content. Which is very sad, but what's even sadder is the devastating impact they can have on the world around them. For this mindset puts the individual at the centre of a universe where everyone else is ultimately there to be defeated, manipulated, or used. I've been talking about people who match up closely to the stereotypes of an incel specifically in this video, but I should also add that it's not necessary to have ever been an incel to begin with to behave like this. All it requires is internalized the standards of patriarchy and toxic masculinity at a very deep subconscious level and failing to recognise it or view it as a problem. And sadly, that's really common. So what does this mean? Does this mean we shouldn't trust anyone who talks the good talk in case they turn out to be a shithead? Well, no, we just have to make sure that it's more than talk. We have to look for evidence behind the claims. And I'm not talking about money being thrown at causes or similar gestures that require precisely zero intellectual or emotional effort. I'm talking about evidence of self-reflection and improvement. I'm talking about consistent commitment to the stated values. A hidden cell can look a lot like a reformed one at first glance, so look for tangible proof that those values have really been shed. Otherwise, what you might be dealing with is not someone who rejects the incel verse at all, but merely claims to on one hand, while upholding it with the other. Special thanks to my monthly coffee supporters. If you would like to help support me to make more videos, then you can join them by becoming a monthly supporter yourself over at my coffee. If that's not doable for you, or you like my content but just don't want to go that far, then you can also help me out a lot by sharing this video, liking it, subscribing, and leaving a comment. As a strategy for picking up girls... Oh, that was bad. <laughs> As a strategy for picking up girls, my pseudo... My pseudo... My pseudo... <laughs> my pseudo-intellectualism proved mostly worthless. <laughs>